Coming up, everyone, apparently Teresa's having marital problems. <laughs> Disney legend and founder of the archive, <laughs> Dave Smith, passes away. <laughs> Walt Disney World can apparently build a nuclear reactor if they want to. And later at the end of the show, we're going to answer your questions because Pete told me about an hour and a half ago that I had to host and come up with a discussion topic. And I decided to steal John's ideas from a couple weeks say, ago. I think I had that idea first. Yeah, absolutely had that idea first. And now I'm taking it so and I'm claiming it as my own. So uh, live from the Bob Varley Ooh. studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. <laughs> This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 1022 for the week of February 19th, 2019. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and Adventures by Disney Vacation, plus so much more. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Diz Unplugged. I am your host today, Craig Williams. I'm filling in for Pete. He is back in his office right now, not knowing whether or not he's contagious. I believe he's coughed on every single one of us already at this point. So Great. I think we're we're beyond... Uh, we're beyond. Screwed. <laughs> That's essentially the, the nice way of putting it. I was going for a different way. Uh, now, he's, he's just not feeling uh, 100% today, so I told him I would be more than happy to sit in and corral this all together, so that's what I am doing. And uh, joining me on this escapade, as you already saw earlier in the, the cold open, John Magi. Hi, everybody. We have Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. We have Teresa Eccles. Hey. Formerly of having marital problems, of course. <laughs> We have that wasn't Julie Teresa, Martin. by the way. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Not having marital problems, Julie Martin. Give it uh, time. But you're making me sing Escapade now. That's good. I know that. <laughs> I know who that is. Uh, and then, of course, on the back, uh, associate producer Rhino Clavin. Hello. I'm assuming that you guys also don't know who Escapade is. You know, is Janet it? Jackson's song? Yes, Escapade? that is exactly oh. what I was singing in my head. See, I was thinking a person, not a song. No. I was thinking an automobile. <laughs> <laughs> See, Kevin is the only person on my wavelength <laughs> today. The Ford Escape. Oh, the Escape. The Ford Escape. We're all over the place with this. So, uh, yeah, that's our gang joining us for this show. Uh, again, Pete's not here, and that's essentially all I have for housekeeping. Beside, uh, Pete wants me to mention, as he mentioned last week, about Magic Candle Company. He loves these candles, and so much that he. Spends hundreds and yeah. hundreds of dollars on them, and you can also spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them <laughs> and also save money by using the offer code Disney Info, and you can save money on your orders. They are candles that smell like stuff all around Disney parks. Universal, smell like stuff. And, what's that? They smell like stuff. They're yeah. Disney-inspired like scents, and people on the boards, I don't own any, people on the boards are saying they're remarkably mm -hmm. accurate, like the Polynesian really smells like mm -hmm. the Polynesian, mm -hmm. so... I understand it. It's the next level of fandom for me. I'm yeah. not at the point where I'll put candles Sense. in my house, uh, but I have other weird things that I do. I'm not yeah. saying that's weird. <laughs> candles aren't weird. I burn candles. I just don't. The hole gets deeper and deeper. <laughs> I and know. Deeper. What other weird things do you do? Uh, well, I recently <laughs> got into Exotica music because I never knew that that was an entire. <laughs> Say it again. Exotica. Exotica. You mean like Ema Sumac? Uh, like um, Les Baxter uh -huh. and Martin Denny and all that. I like. I've always loved that style Lounge of music. music. I just didn't know that it had its own genre, and so that's all I've been playing in the background now. It's been oh, tiki music. music, exactly. Yeah, that yeah, makes tiki, sense. Space this morning, music. yeah, I just, came in here and he had that like vibe. Ross on the <laughs> like a seagull <laughs> stuff. Yeah, you know, there's uh, bombs and explosions. Go look for Ema Sumac. Yep. You a Y M A. I will. Look her up. No, absolutely. Okay. So that's all I have for housekeeping. Who else has housekeeping? I do. Um, so I just want to uh, bring it up. Pete's not here, but he did tell me that he is um, pretty much putting the final touches on another solo show. So if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll see that pop up soon. I'm not going to put a date on it because he is under the weather. So I don't want him to feel rushed or anything like that. And um, But uh, yeah, so if you want to... 
view that, just stay tuned in there. It's on patreon.com slash disunplugged. Um, you can check out that and all that we do over there. Most excellent. Me. Yes, Teresa. Um, I want to thank everybody for the well wishes and prayers. My mother-in-law passed away a few days ago, and um, family's doing good. I just want to thank everybody. That's it. Thank you. That's nice of everyone. It was very sweet, except you. You just called me to talk, and I wasn't around. I didn't, you didn't call you to talk. No, I did not know, but <laughs> I was out at yeah, Port Canaveral, and I was like, I'm so excited. I'm finally going to get to see Teresa. And I wasn't the there. Center, and you weren't there. And then I felt terrible when you're like, I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> For a funeral. For a funeral. It's like, should have been something I should have known about. No, it's but all right. It's okay. She had fought a long battle with cancer, and it was time. So it was a blessing that she went. Oh. She has to fight no more. Yes. Nope. No and more we're fighting. glad that you're here. Yep. I'm so. glad I'm back home. I have Kevin? one. Thursday is a special day. Thursday is John's birthday. <laughs> <gasps> wow. He's only 62. Oh. Yes. He's older than I am. And in that moment, Teresa was fired. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you think that's the worst thing she's ever said about me? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Revealing his true age. Do you know me? I was just going to say, happy birthday. Thank you. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, this week? Like the day after tomorrow? Yeah. Wow. That's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> and tomorrow would be my mom's birthday. They were always back to back. Oh, that's cool. Good way to remember. John's, mm-hmm. I guess. I just feel terrible that we're going to spend your birthday recording dream shows. Don't feel terrible. A gift is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I prefer to do it. Oh, Excellent. I'm dig around my big bag and see what I can give you for a present. <laughs> Here's a silver. <laughs> Here's a Tic Tac from the trip. <laughs> an M and M I didn't eat. <laughs> oh yeah, there are no th- none of those. <laughs> really, none oh, of those. No. What is that thing behind you? Is that the Terminator's hand, Craig? On the I, shelf behind you. I'm not sure. I'm. Sh- I think it's oh, some this? sort of probe for those listening. What? No, 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 no. It's no. it's metallic. It's a, it's a spaceship. It's a uh, Pete bought that during the Festival of the Arts. It was a guy that makes um, these sculptures and statues, and you can see them at the uh, Pop Gallery at Disney Springs. But yeah, yeah and ran, it's found. It's, it's all made out of things like that. Yeah. Like he has robots. He made some out of like uh, the cocoa tins that you get, stuff like that. There was like a ray gun that was really cool. Probe, John. I see it from this <laughs> angle. Oh, it could in fact still be a probe of some sort. We don't know. So the jury's not out yet. <laughs> see how I got it away from my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> clever. Very clever. Uh, yeah, but now we're talking about probes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. But any other housekeeping? Jolie, did you have? I, I really one? don't. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You don't have I'm trying to. Trying to think of something oh. witty to say, but it's it's fine. It'll be good. Okay. Well, since we have no more housekeeping, I think we're going to go ahead and move on to the news. So I'm going to send it over to John. All our right. Story. Our first news story. A little sad. Walt Disney Archives founder Dave Smith has passed away at age 78. I don't have the right glasses, so forgive me. Uh, Dave Smith, founder of the Walt Disney World Archives and Disney Legend, has passed away. He was hired in 1970 by uh, Roy O. Disney, Walt's brother, and his original job was to catalog the items in Walt's office. When Walt had passed away, they sealed up his office, and no one was allowed in there, bless you. Bless you. And no one was allowed to touch anything, so he was hired to go in and catalog everything. And we talk about this on our dream show we did a couple weeks ago. We got a chance to see the office, and it's pretty unbelievable how he's been able to, they've been able to painstakingly reproduce it based on his cataloging. Um, during his time as Disney's chief archivist, Dave grew the archives from a simple one-person apartment to a model among corporate archives. He's regarded by fans and historians as the final authority on many of Disney's history and was an active member of the Society of California Archivists. He served from 1980 to 2001 as executive director of the Manuscript Society. Um, And he has been, uh, there's a statement on Twitter from Bob Iger that says, I'm deeply saddened to learn of Dave Smith's passing. He was the unsung history of unsung hero of Disney's history who, as our first archivist, spent 40 years rescuing countless documents and artifacts from obscurity investing endless hours restoring and preserving these priceless pieces of legacy and putting them in context to tell our story. 
Dave was a true Disney legend, and we are indebted to him for building such an enduring, tangible connection to our past that continues to inspire our future. Um, one of the cool things that I think Dave has done is he's allowed these things to make it out into the world for people to see. Like if you go to D23 or you go to other Disney events, you get to see these pieces that you know otherwise would just be locked up somewhere or might be lost forever. When we, we just toured Walt's office as part of our adventures by Disney, and they explained that this was exactly as it was the day he died because of this man. I mean, he cataloged how many pencils were in the pencil cup and took pictures so that they could recreate it. The exact number of paper clips are in the drawer. And, you know, you don't see that, but you think to yourself, that level of detail is kind of amazing. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, it's anytime you see any historical prop, you know that Walt Disney Archives has had some sort of interaction with that, whether they saved it from somewhere, or it was donated to them, luckily. And, and John's is absolutely right. It's, it's stuff that they could easily hide away and just release photographs of and be like, we have this and you don't get to see it. But instead, they look for opportunities to bring it out and show the world. And who knows if this would have ever happened. It, like without Dave Smith, it this might have been something that just never existed for Disney fans. We had a chance to meet him on like, several occasions. And yeah. something that he said was... Didn't we have him on a podcast cruise? We did, and we had him on a podcast yeah, cruise. I remember that. He, one of the things is he said was the... Um, he was surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, how much stuff was being thrown away. And he said to somebody, why are we throwing this stuff away? And they said, well, we have nothing to do. There's no, nothing we can do with it. No one has a plan for it. There's no place to keep it. So he decided, no, we should be keeping this stuff, that this stuff is important to the corporate history. Mm -hmm. So to have that much forethought and insight to think, boy, this is going to be important someday is pretty unbelievable. Yeah. Know? No, absolutely. All the He's written books on Disney trivia. It's he, if this is the first time you're actually hearing his name, chances are you've you've stumbled across something at some point in time that he did. He's very important, and luckily there's a lot of other people who work with the archives who have kind of who are carrying on his torch. Uh, Becky Klein is absolutely incredible, uh, and she has such a passion for Disney and archives, and and not only showing off the history but also preserving it too. So it's not like the archives are just going to fall apart in general because he's he's no longer alive. But it's it is a huge loss, especially coming a week after Ron Miller. I mean, we're just yeah. it, we're just losing a bunch of important people with Disney more and more. Well, the so. reason why I think the reason why the archives will go on is because of what he's put in place. Yeah. You know, he's set up the system where people are now doing this on a regular basis. So yeah. it'll, they'll never go away. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I'm sure his legacy has inspired other studios to do the same props that they thought were just, you know, put him back in the prop warehouse, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have that much importance. Obviously, some stuff like Dorothy's Ruby slippers, those reach a new level of iconic status. But, you know, that opens the door for other. I apologize. I have to jump in. Yeah. Do you know who did this before him? Who? Debbie Reynolds. Oh, oh Debbie yeah. Reynolds went to when they would dis they'd clean out warehouses at movie studios, and she bought costumes and artifacts, and with the idea that she was going to open a museum, and she ended up selling off mm -hmm. a lot of them at auctions. She had, uh, I believe, she had Marilyn Monroe's seven year mm -hmm. itch dress in her collection. I actually have a huge wall size poster that I bought from Debbie Reynolds and it stands wow. on the back of it that this was from the Debbie Reynolds collection. It's from a movie called Travels with My Aunt with Maggie Smith. It is a horrible movie and a beautiful poster and it was owned <laughs> by Debbie Reynolds. So I genuinely did not know that. Yeah, so, she was a big collector. So I think I, I, I'm grateful that people do this. Yeah. So Debbie Reynolds was the original Dave Smith. Well, not for Disney, but she yeah, would, yeah. when the, the studio think, system was kind of falling apart, she would buy up Lots and lots and lots of, not lots and lots, but a lot, like when they auction off a lot of costumes, she would buy those and she would have them restored and she was going to open up a, a a museum in Las Vegas that I don't think ever happened. No. I think the difference with Dave Smith is he recognized it from a corporate history level oh, yeah. and it wasn't just what was in a movie. He said, listen, <laughs> that sign Right. Or that ride vehicle that's no longer going to be there. We should have one of those to show future, even documents, just 
papers that yeah. have might be completely random to anyone looking at them nowadays was important at some point in time. I had a friend who was doing some freelance work for Disney and was walking out one day and the giant fiberboard posters that you see in different parts of the park, there was one sticking out of a garbage can and it was for the Skyway to Tomorrowland. And he said, are you just throwing this away? And they said, yeah. And he said, can I take it home with me? He said, yeah. And he took it out of it and put it in his car. And it's probably four feet by five and a half feet. But it's one of the things that was advertised in the park for the Skyway to Tomorrowland. So I think to myself, I hope they've gotten the idea that there are people out there who will pay for their trash. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's true. Someone in the chat asked, uh, hopefully when Pete dies, I want his house to turn into a museum with a preserved podcast room. Do we see that happening? No. Okay. That's creepy. Yeah. No. <laughs> I see a disgruntled employee setting matches. Oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> or that thing where, like, the Beatles go over the bone and pick it clean and then go away. I mean, Ringo and John. And <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. Wow. <laughs> okay, next news story. All yeah, right, our next news story. Let's you do on. realize we turned that sad story into something more fun. More sad. Uh, <laughs> going from death to nuclear reactors, <laughs> lawmakers debate 1967 deal, which gives Disney the right to build a nuclear reactor in Orlando. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me see if I can just sort of boil this down rather than reading it, because it's kind of dry. The Reedy Creek Improvement District was founded in 1967 as a governing body, body for Walt Disney World. So that... Basically, they could get around a, around a lot of rules and regulations and build the property quickly with their specifications. Because of this, they also are the governing body and they pick all the board members who can be on the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Apparently, the uh, fire department is uh, the Reedy Creek Firefighters Association is taking exemption to this and saying, well, they want to be on the board. They think they should have people on the board because they're part of the community. And in looking at this law, um, there's been some uncovering of a piece of information that I guess wasn't made public for a while. Uh, let me see. Let me find the exact thing that says it. I apologize. Talk amongst yourselves. It's terrifying no matter what you're going to find. <laughs> I think it's pronounced nuclear. Actually. Is that what it is? So in other words, in, in basic, I can't find the exact <laughs> sentence, but basically what the idea is in with this law of Reedy Creek being the, the thing is they also have the right to build a nuclear power plant on property. And so others are saying, well, this isn't really right, and they shouldn't have the ability to do this. So this debate is coming up, but it's more couched in the fact that Disney has the right to pursue other technologies. They have their own electricity on property now. They have... Um, a um, solar farm on property so that they want to do is they want to be able to continue to have this ability to do it and that's where this is coming about people say it's not right for them to be able to build a nuclear power plant if they want yeah i mean who actually thinks that disney would ever build a nuclear power plant a nuclear like, reactor like who like they're investing in so much like clean reusable right. energy why would they go after? And yeah, I know there are benefits, I guess some benefits to nuclear energy, but it's just so left field. Like I see them putting up like wind towers before they would do anything Wouldn't that like be that. Wouldn't pretty? I love wind towers. <laughs> so the question is then, then should we just say they can't do it? Because we don't think they would do it. Why would they still want to keep the ability to do it? Well, you know. I Never mean, that's, know. that's a good part yeah. of the archive. That, well, what I'm saying is, like, what's let's assume that in our current state of affairs, we have had many a clean energy regulations that have been revoked. The country is no longer in the Paris uh, Accords or any of that stuff, so we don't care about that thing anymore. And let's say we just continue on this spiral for a long time, and all of this sort of stuff is deregulated, and then Disney's like, well, we can do whatever we want, and we have the ability to make this power. So what I'm saying is right now they do that clean energy stuff because it makes them look good. But what if everything goes – like right what now. if we continue on this slope that we're on? You think if we on? have the zombie apocalypse, That's idiocracy. Disney can then be their own I'm, sort of – Am I right? 
a, a radioactive Mickey Mouse coming at you on your vacation. Or, or I mean, or in a, in a broader sense, just the fact that they can then be, they can have power yeah. that's not tied to, you know, buying the rest it of from, the world or sell it back to this area. Yeah. I just think about the damage. I'm not going to get into what Rhino's talking about. I, I, I just think. I, I just think about the damage another nuclear reactor can do to the world. And it's, I, I'm from an area of the world that has them. And it's a terrifying thing when you don't know they're testing the alarm system and your family starts panicking because they hear it outside when they hear those alarms go off and nobody knows what to do. And I just think, like, you build a facility like this, it doesn't go away for hundreds of years. Like, it, we Ever. had one that we closed that is now guarded permanently for the next, like, 100 and something years because that land is no longer good, but people can still damage it to do, you know, bad stuff to it. And so I just, I, it's, it's just kind of like if you're not going to do it and you don't care, then just say, okay, we'll take that one little piece away and give it away. It makes me nervous when they're not like, like no, we want to keep it in our back pocket. Well, yeah, I mean, they get rid of one thing, then they might feel pressured to get rid of something else down the road that's in another <clears throat> deal that comes up, and it, it could be a slippery slope for them. And they have lawyers there that I'm sure are constantly telling them, no, you have to be concerned about this. Don't don't give up any ground. I well, don't know how lawyers work, but that's what I know <laughs> from TV. Well, this is, I still think, like, this, so Perry is, Mason always this is definitely reminds me of, like, well... You know, Epcot being a city uh, of, you know, how is the city going to be powered? It was supposed to be this whole sustainable entire world that they created themselves. And it, I feel like this obviously was part of in the 60s. Like, what are we going to do for power? Well, we can build this thing. And so it's probably left over from that, you know. Oh, yeah. It's a very, it, I, in my opinion, it seems antiquated. But then again, I, uh, I'm i one of those people who's just blind to the world, living it. <laughs> My own. Sometimes I go to the gas station and I just spray gasoline about. <laughs> we'll never run out of this. So. He just so loves weird. carbon emissions. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Williams so kills the ozone layer. Oh it's goodness. like just go out and burn styrofoam just because. <laughs> Why not? It's not going to hurt me. He likes what it looks like when it burns. So, um, yeah. it's. I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, Maybe they'll take it out. Maybe they won't. <laughs> Oh, John, well, move on, move on. Well, I think the thing is, is you know, the restriction is feels like it's more like they are allowed to do future stuff. Yeah. And so when does something else comes along that's better than nuclear? When does someone actually figures out fission mm. or something like that? Should Disney then have the right to do it? Or should they be told they can't do it because they don't want to be regulated because we want to regulate what they do? Yeah. It's an interesting question. Also, part of this is they were... They have the right to build a uh, an airport. So if they want to build an airport on property, they can. This is definitely part of that Epcot prototype because there was an airport in in the original plan. Like a, the yeah. strip was there. It's, it was, it's actually still yeah. there. It's just before you get to the Magic Kingdom. It used to be called the <laughs> Stahl Port, S-T-O-L Port. And it's right by where you go into um, Wilderness Lodge, I think. It, Stahl is S-T-O-L, and it stands for Short Takeoff and Landing. And it was for private planes to land at Disney World. I just think it's really – this part of Disney is really fascinating to me because it, in, like, the Reedy Creek District and stuff because we – it's like Reedy Creek has one is, – isn't there, like, thing that one person has to live in this one area and they're, like, the mayor of Reedy yeah. Creek or something There's, like that? I actually used to work with the mayor of Reedy Creek – the, the mayor of Lake Buena Vista. Yeah. Because that's the town. He had a giant lollipop. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I imagine. He comes out and sings a song. And it's a – Dance. And uh, one of these days, if we're ever out on property, I'll show you where it is. And it's I think it's, like, eight homes – um, now they're behind a gate because you used to be able to just drive up. Oh. We used to drive in and look at them all the time. Look at their neighborhood. And it's they, out by Saratoga Springs on the other side of the road. And these huh. are people who would vote on the mayor and things like that. And they voted the same guy in every year because he was the best at putting up Christmas decorations. John. I do I just, not make that's this true. up. No, this it, is true. it is true. It's so <laughs> Are there children living there? Yes, there are children living there. Wow. There's no school system. They have to go to a different school. But... I mean, let me just say it's, it all happened I don't, with the incorporation of the yeah. Disney area. I want to just clarify. I don't know for sure there are children living there now. There were when I was. I knew this How person. How does who one was a live there? Is John the real estate agent? <laughs> <laughs> right. How these does are, one buy a house? These are mobile homes. <laughs> yeah. 
these are they're trailers. It, I don't know the specifics of if if they. Are I wasn't now. offending anyone. <laughs> they're mobile homes. I grew up in one of those. <laughs> I don't know if they are if the land is leased to them for a certain amount of time. I don't know if there's restrictions on how many people. I don't know the deal about it. I just know that it exists. Well, you know why what was going to happen? They were going to have people live at Disney World. There were going to be housing, yeah. and you know why they stopped? Because if they live there, they got to vote. Right. Oh. So then they and how things out. happen. Right. Mm. So they could technically, if people are living there, they could say, okay, we don't want you to build, you know, a nuclear Star reactor. Wars land or a nuclear reactor, <laughs> whatever it is. All right. We really got deep into that one. We did. Let's move on to the last one. All right. Our third and final news story. Firearm reported in recent dispute over disabled parking space at Animal Kingdom. According to Orange County Sheriff's records, a husband and wife... We're getting ready to visit Disney's Animal Kingdom theme park when the wife, who was driving, stopped in the parking lot to wait for a car backing out with the intention of taking the spot. The woman told deputies that, quote, a man driving a gray SUV from the opposite direction sped up and tried to cut them off to get the space, end quote, and almost crashed into them. Our SUV is black, by the way. I was just going to say, not us. (laughs) The The woman who reported... Uh, The woman also reported that, quote, the husband raised his right fist at the SUV driver who responded by lifting a semi-automatic handgun above the steering wheel and pointing it at them. Good Lord. Although a passenger at the of the SUV stated that there was no handgun. Officers located the SUV driver and his female passenger as a security at the security checkpoint of the theme park where the woman told authorities, quote, she made an angry gesture. He made an angry gesture with his wallet, not a gun, in his hand. As she, you do. She also reportedly <laughs> declared that the two, quote, were concealed weapons permit holders and that they did have a handgun in the vehicle. Uh, but he wears his wallet. But I didn't pick that up. I no, picked no, up my wallet. My wallet. I thought yeah, that was that threatening. <laughs> The officer's report does mention that if the SUV driver was holding his wallet against the steering wheel, it possibly could have resembled a square flat gun magazine, as the female driver of the other vehicle has described. According to the Orlando Sentinel, the sheriff's office obtained a search warrant from a judge to search the man's vehicle, but the incident report redacted about what, if anything, was found. The sheriff's office was forwarded the case to the state attorney's office to decide whether um, to file charges. The man, whose name was not released, wasn't arrested because there were conflicting stories about what happened. This so happened. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what you say. This did they, so happened. Did they both have the tag to use the disabled spot? Probably. This is not the point. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 She was hooked on, well, who got the spot? Instead of talking about, should you point a gun at someone in the parking lot, <laughs> you're thinking, should they be allowed to park there if they don't have oh, a tag? Also, Teresa would have fried the green SUV tomatoes. the SUV was going up a one way because all Disney yep. parking lots, it's a one way. It is not a two way street. So ever. the gun to- wallet toting man came the wrong way? Yes. I would have yeah. tawanded it all over him. Yeah, tawanded. Right? Totally. Right. Disney <laughs> parking lots are like, when you think what about. What does that mean? I don't know. Fried green tomatoes. Fried green tomatoes. She crashes her car and I'm older and I have more uh, insurance. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, every single time I go to park at a Walt Disney World theme park parking lot, I feel like if I'm if other people are having the same experience that I am, then how is this starting their vacation off like yeah. on a bright mm-hmm. spot? Like my favorite thing right now lately is it doesn't matter. I can go to Hollywood Studios ten minutes before it closes, and they will still have people parking you out in the very yeah. last rows. Yeah, it's like, and I, I I get what they're doing. By the time I get out of my car and walk to the front, the park will be closed, and I can't go in. But it's like, just let me at that time of day, let me park yeah. closer. And then at Epcot, it seems like they always have the the top right lot closed off. For the preferred parking, that's $50. <laughs> mm-hmm. That and Then there will be six cars in the row, and everyone else is walking out from the furthest yeah. stretch beyond. So I am not I am not saying this person is justified in any way for what they did. They are absolutely not. And I have no doubt that they were pointing a gun in a threatening way at a person. But uh, on another side of things that has nothing to do with this topic, I wish 
someone would come in and just rehaul all of their parking because it is a freaking nightmare. It really is. And I, I used to park cars, so I know but the, how smooth and easy it can be. The and they cr- make it so hard. The craziest part is like Hollywood Studios is essentially you thought like, well, that will be the example of the future because it's a brand new parking lot. And I still go in there and you're like, I don't know which way to go. You go through their new main entrance and they have all these Such temporary cones and these lines up and you're supposed to go straight, but there's other cars coming. I'm like, what? is going on didn't you just build this road why does it look like this i i, I don't confusing. get that the studios are a mess i, I do so i do have a question about the concealed weapon though okay so is it a thing because at ucf i know it is anywhere on campus even if you have a concealed weapons permit you're not allowed to have the weapon with you anywhere Correct. on campus property is disney the same way like you can't have it in oh, your car I don't know what the rule would be at Disney. I know you can't bring it in the park. And that's yeah. That's usually, the rule. Yeah. they'll confiscate whatever but, so, you have. So, but again, yeah. But you, your if, car I, is your if I if I left the property, yeah, that's what I'm say, saying. That, yeah. yeah, that's that's what's kind of crazy because at UCF, I think it was in like 2013, they did they told everyone, okay, we're changing the rule, and I was like, what was the rule before? Well, and they're like, they don't want it in your car, yep. they don't want it anywhere because, and if they find it or see it anywhere, you'll be removed and. I grew school. up at a high school where most people had guns in their gun rack in the back of their truck. Coaches, students. I'm from Just a very was, yeah. rural place. Okay. And it was the 90s, so it was a little different then. But um, the rule has changed now, and guns are not allowed on campus yeah. no matter what. But I will say this. There was a coach who saved us from a rabbit squirrel once because he had a shotgun. <laughs> so a rabbit squirrel. You couldn't just run. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a rabbit squirrel? Craig? Weren't there more of you than him? <laughs> I'd be. T- he has, like, there's a statue. There's a plaque. <laughs> Did it have like the height like, advantage on you? You couldn't just I remember step when on that it? wasn't a big deal. So I'm in your shoes now, though, Rhino. Yeah. Like I don't want to be in a space where people are allowed to have a weapon like that in their car. Yeah. I don't believe they should be allowed on property. Well, I think even beyond that, I think, don't you, isn't it just a matter of time at Disney before something like That's this? That's what I'm afraid of. I don't know why it hasn't ours. happened. That's what I said. I said, I don't know why uh, we haven't something heard of something now. big has happened. Because there's so yeah. much, going to what Craig said, there's so much stress over parking and there's yeah. so much mm-hmm. craziness over someone's going to get a better spot than you and all this stuff. I, I'm shocked that no one's been yeah. shot yet. So people in chat here are saying that Disney has the right to deny weapons on private property. They can't confiscate but they can deny you access and tell you to leave. I said confiscate based on, and not guns, but all the time at Universal, we'd have people carry knives, uh. like constantly, and we did confiscate yeah. any single time. Now that they have metal detectors in City Walk, and you can't get to the parks without going through, it's it never really, a lot of stuff like that doesn't get through anymore. But back in the day when you could just walk in without any issues, as soon as they found a knife it's, or any sort of weapon, it was instantly confiscated. So I can't believe that that Disney wouldn't also confiscate stuff that does make it that much further. I mean, do you like? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. It, it's hard because I do get how you you can't really check, but it should just be it should be like how it was at school, like essentially. Just so you know, this is a no no arms area, and if you you are seen with that, you will be asked to leave with mm-hmm. it, and that's just part of the rule. You know, yeah. like when you wear an inappropriate shirt or anything like that, and it's not an argument about your right to carry or anything like that. It's just about the rule on the private property. So there all. might be ways that Disney can do that based on a room reservation, right? They can make yeah. that part of the rules of a room reservation, mm-hmm. but I don't know that they can do it as far as just someone driving on right. Disney property. Even with a theme park ticket, you might it might say you can't park with a, a gun in your vehicle. Yeah. But just the, I mean, Disney's an open property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can drive through it to yeah. get to housing. True. You can't you can't say no one can have a gun in their car. Exactly. And I if someone brings it up to the gate though, as soon as that point, in my opinion, yeah, so if someone gate. brings it up, it should be confiscated. Even go with the route of saying you can pick it up at the end of the day, like any other item that can get confiscated going through selfie stick big, stuff like can't that. Get a big bucket of guns. <laughs> yeah, Here, find your gun. Yeah, let me tag that it would be you. your gun check, just like a coat oh, check gosh. back in the day at a restaurant. <laughs> like Are a you describing check. a saloon back in the, in the old day? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, an old timey saloon where you have to <laughs> speak easy. You know, yeah. Here's my gun. A mafia bar. Yeah, mafia and I don't bar. understand it. Parking in Animal Kingdom is so easy. There are not enough <laughs> mafia bars. Like, <laughs> not enough. Parking in Animal Kingdom is so easy. I just go right up in front of Rainforest Cafe. 
you know, right where those stalls are where people are selling stuff. That's where I like to park. <laughs> no, you don't park there? <laughs> I know that's where you park. You do know, don't I, right? Pull right up As there. As I walk past it all the way back to Flamingo or wherever <laughs> Flamingo I Flamingo 99. <laughs> but don't you get mad sometimes when you think, I could park here. There's I no reason why I couldn't it's, park right there. It's funny because I'm actually having really good luck at Animal Kingdom. They seem to be parking us in the preferred parking that used to be the right parking lot. I don't know if they've switched preferred to the other side, but I, I think it's the like the row 15 and back so you're still they're like okay we get this many of preferred parking on average so we'll put them here and it makes for a much nicer experience i guess i don't know bottom line for me is if someone takes my parking spot fine take it i don't know who you are or what your temperament is mm-hmm. i'm gonna walk away because you don't know exactly you don't know i'm just gonna go fine Karma will get you in the end. I'll go find something. Yeah, and I'll let the air out of your tires while you're in the park. All right. It's fine. Pull out my little knife and slash your tire. I'm good. No, you don't slash the tire. You let the air out with a pencil because there's no damage done to the vehicle. My mother taught me that. <laughs> Whoa, okay. No, I Sounds just, like I mom's got away. some experience. When she was bartending at the mafia bar, apparently. <laughs> Mark Clavin was giving lessons. <laughs> Listen here, Sonny. <laughs> you don't damage the tires. Yeah. Come Fantastic. on, Muggsy. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's... All right, that'll do it for the news. Yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to rapid fire, and I'm going to throw it over to John. All right, I just want to give everybody an update on our August event. Uh, Event dates are August 6th through August 11th, 2019. As I've mentioned in the past, the party is sold out. We have no more spots at the party on the 10th, but there is still the opportunity to come and join us for the event. We are still taking sign-ups for that if you'd like to attend just the event. Meet and greets with the team. The team members are going to come up with uh, individual events. Yes, you are, Teresa. And you'll be able to spend time with them. Uh, Everything that we do in the event itself will be free of charge. There'll be no charge for it. We will ask for donations for Give Kids the World, depending on what we do and what we come up with. There's going to be a silent auction for Give Kids the World. And in probably in about a month or so, I will be putting the information out on how you can donate items. There'll be a form that you fill out, and that tells you, it gets it into our system, but also tells uh, you how to get the item to us for the silent auction. We're going to be having a live podcast taping on the 11th, um, and I will be sending out information as to time and place as we get closer. Um, The only other thing I want to say is if you signed up for the party, we're going to have transportation from the party to a Disney resort, including the Swan and Dolphin. There'll be a slight charge for that. And again, as we get closer to the event, folks are starting to ask, when am I going to find out about this? I don't have the answers for you just yet or dates just yet. So I appreciate your patience while we work on all of that. What do you know what you're going to do for your little private? I do. Oh, you're not sharing. Does everybody know? No, you nobody know? knows. I, do, I know what I'm doing for mine. I do I'm for mine too. I'm going to invite 20 people over to my house. And they're going to clean it for me. <laughs> See, I, I was going to do a Klaus meet and greet at you the house. You know what the problem is? You say that as a joke, people. but people are going to take you up on that. I want to come yeah, to your see, house. I'm going to have a party happen. where we sit and judge all of the rest of your ideas. <laughs> there you go. As we usually do. Um, so, yeah. So, now that I've said that, you guys have to come up with ideas and send them to me so we can. I'm not going to Craig's and Clean. Create. <laughs> create it's um, not that dirty. It's just it needs a little TLC. I'm not T L or C. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for my rapid fire. (laughs) Kevin? (laughs) Uh, Maria and Enzo's, the restaurant at Disney Springs, is extending their 40% annual pass discount through May 31st. Talk about a mafia bar. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think that's a great thing. However, in the little blurb, it tells us the story behind, you know how everything at Disney has a story? Mm -hmm. I love that this one is so totally random. (laughs) The restaurant Tell tells the story of an immigrant couple from Italy, who, before the wall, whose dream was to have a restaurant in the terminal, an airport terminal, to celebrate the golden age of travel. Come on. God, that was my dream, too. They wanted to have a restaurant in an airline terminal. And I have to tell you, that's what it looks like. It looks like an airline terminal. We've only eaten there once, and it was for brunch. So it, I haven't really ordered off the menu this was a buffet but we thought it was really good imagine going to mco and being like i know my new life's dream i a imagine like flying here. into rome and thinking i need to open a restaurant in the rome airport wearing <laughs> gloves and a hat 
You know, you got to dress for travel. Yes. Hairnet. Right. <laughs> I knew what she was thinking. Yes, you Donna know? Reed, it's your turn. <laughs> I've traveled with you. You you don't wear a hat. No, anymore. but I would stand out. But I'm just saying. <laughs> she's thinking about if I'm it thinking were about along, the 50s. I know what she's thinking about. Her gloves, her hat, her beautiful traveling suit with yes. her little train case. My tra- I have case. my train case. Yeah. Yeah. And her hat box. Do you work yeah. for yeah. Pan Am? In yeah, I, don't worry. I did watch the show Pan Am. <laughs> yeah. I did too. I, I like that show. I that show. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Teresa? <laughs> You're bringing a little bit of the oh. Port Canaveral to, oh, she sure did. to Walt Disney World, aren't you? With your I rapid am. Fire. Ron John Surf Shop is opening up a 10,000 square foot shop in Disney Springs near the Polite Pig um, late 2019, yeah. late this year. So you Go stuff your, your face, get a bathing suit. Really? <laughs> so you can get your long board while yeah. on vacation. Right? <laughs> This and you're probably going to piss off in your all, board board shorts. Well, it just throws off all the billboards that you pass as you're driving right? down 75 and 95. Exactly. Like, yeah. only 70 miles to no, Coco. Actually, now, I saw one the other day. 201 miles yeah. to Ron John's. <laughs> and so I'm calculating. Okay, so that's like an hour There's from my house. There's been Ron John on I drives the entire yes. time. It's lived. a joke. Oh, okay. I was going to say. A joke. Uh, but the, the original is I in Cocoa yeah. Beach, I think. And it's uh, huge. And it's a it's a tourist mecca. Where you get your free parking. Yeah. You go there, you walk in, so you can feel like I can justify the fact that I cut through and I'm trying to get to Taco Bell and I curse at people and wave my fist at them because they're in my way. (laughs) Are you wearing gloves? She's waving her wallet out the window at them. (laughs) I gotta get my Taco Bell! (laughs) Teresa's immigrant dream. (laughs) I've always wanted to open a Taco Bell next to Ron John. No, from the Welcome Center, if you go the back way and you cut all the way and then you come up and. I don't know if she heard the wallet. Teresa's making her run for the border. Anyway, I mean, I guess I guess I'm glad they're keeping it in like a Florida staple surf shop, but I don't know. I don't feel like feet. it's a great addition. I don't know. Don't I, I, but it's also Ron John does have like very expensive surfboards and yes, stuff in do. it, but they have a lot of uh, reasonably priced merchandise in there. And and we and do have long, great surfing in Orlando. <laughs> as long uh, <laughs> as long as they don't like raise the prices on what they have in their store because they're all of a sudden at Disney Springs, yeah. then I think it's fine. It's actually... Yeah, we need to check that out and see if it is. The more bargains you that. can get at Disney Springs, the better because most of the stores aren't for the average person. Well, it'll be, it'll be a good place to buy a bathing suit if you forgot to get a bathing suit on vacation. But Nothing if you else, go to this Ron John's, you can't come by the Welcome Center and see me because I always send people down to Ron John's to get me Taco Bell next door. <laughs> well, what you just said is true most places. If there's a tourist, tourist destination, I mean, most tourist destinations are filled with targets. It's, you know, you're being soaked because you're a tourist. Yeah. That's pretty much any of them. I'm sure 10,000 square feet at Disney Springs is expensive. Oh yeah, I think they got to pay for it. So what's there now? If it's by the polite pig, the polite pig's right by. It the- was the um, the store that was the temporary store where they were redoing um, Disney uh, the um, World, of, World Disney? of Disney. It was that two floored one that had like around Halloween. They had the Halloween costumes oh, okay. in it, and then it was two floors. Yeah, it, it, ten thousand feet is surprising to me because it didn't seem like it was huge in there. But but hmm? oh. I don't know. I 10, think it'll be square a nice feet? addition. I don't know math. Or yeah, that's the size stuff. of my house. So. Oh, then maybe it is. Fl- yeah. You're going to need more than 20 F- people then. <laughs> Thousands of people come to uh, Disney World, and they don't have vehicles. They don't have a way to get to Cocoa Beach, and this is a way for them to... <laughs> what don't they have? <laughs> vehicles. <laughs> vehicles. <laughs> Cars. <laughs> hey, I just come from Atlanta. Thank you, Ellie. Thank vehicles. you, Ellie May. <laughs> they don't have vehicles. <laughs> You know, Come on, port- trailer girl, you're on my side. I right? know it's, it's just so funny. <laughs> Vehicles to get to the cement pond. <laughs> Horseless carriages. Well, that's like I, I say. I, I, what do I say? Crank the car. And crank the car. Is like, what does that mean? Why are you? What are you crank cranking? The car. You're cranking the car. Apparently, the original Ron Johns is in Ship Bottom, New Jersey. Is that a sure. place? Yeah, it's a place. Okay. Shit bottom. And a lot of people are hating on Taco Bell, and I'm not okay with that. Me Taco either. Bell is delicious. Taco Bell, crunchy taco, dude, all the way. Uh, come on. It's an inexpensive meal when one's forced to work at a welcome center. <laughs> Happy You're not forced to work anywhere. <laughs> no, I love it. Exactly. I love it. Thank it's an, you, it's Teresa. In our, it's in our dining rotation. Thank you, <laughs> Teresa. And Thank they you. deliver. Thank you, Teresa. Sorry, people who are bagging on Taco Bell are lying. We've all been to one. Oh, my God. I, that are they is, really? That's where Kylie and I went last year for Valentine's Day, if are I can they really remember correctly. Are they really saying it's bad? 
Yeah, there are people saying it's gross. Give me some names. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, so is McDonald's. Let's go through the names here. Give people. me some names. Okay, we have... Uh, Don't shame people in there. Oh, Jen no. Weatherington, not a fan of Taco Bell. Jen Weatherington, what's your problem? Uh, <laughs> go on. <laughs> yeah. Give me another name. We Someone, who is that? I think um, Edgar Pinato. Edgar? What's the deal? What's happening? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. I'm not, I'm not Julie. Move on. Okay. Um, next. Would win- you all give out your email addresses? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> no, I don't want any of more of those emails. Mardi Gras rooftop dinner next Wednesday, February twenty seventh at six thirty. It's going to be taking place at Paddlefish. You can go to the third deck of the boat. You know, Paddlefish boat. And enjoy a New Orleans inspired four course dinner with Mardi Gras themed. For those cocktail. of you not watching, there is definitely a maneuver going on. It's <laughs> the maneuver. Third floor, okay. third deck. Oh gosh, the, the you know the very top uh-huh. level, the and it's really one. pretty up there. And it's, if it's a nice evening, if it's a nice night for an evening that night, I like your necklace. You'll have a nice time. It's cute. Thank you. So there's going to be what a little. <clears throat> three. I'm just teasing. <laughs> This is so, going to be one of those things, I think, if you're from New Orleans and if you experience no, Mardi exactly. Gras, like, right, I shouldn't go to this. You okay. shouldn't. You and Corey shouldn't. Um, or Jeff and Val shouldn't You can go have a there. mini um, muffalata. Your first course will be a crab-stuffed merleton. Mm-hmm. If you do not know what a merleton is, it is a type of squash. It is a member of the gourd family, and it is heavily used in Louisiana cooking, especially in New Orleans. Good gourd. Um, <laughs> second course, seafood etouffee. Is I've it never had beige? an etouffee Is it a beige gourd? Is it beige? Um, it's green. Oh, it's green. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know what it is then. Um, and then your third course is confit chicken and grits. Dessert, bananas foster. And you must be 21 years of age or older to attend. $95 per person. Wow. Um, it says click here to purchase. So I don't know where you go to buy these tickets. <laughs> is that on the disc? Yeah. There'll be a link in the show notes page, right? <laughs> Let's be real. Who's, say that? There'll be a link in the show notes. If oh, I get wait, at least wait, wait, 10 wait, people wait, in wait, chat to say wait, that they're going to wait. buy it, then I will give this the link out. This is important. Jackie Gailey has just texted me. Update. Paddlefish says they have changed the date to the 25th. <gasps> so oh. it is not Monday. the 27th. It will it be is Monday. Monday the 25th. I bum, just, bum, bum. I just Why not just do it on actual Mardi Gras? I mean, that makes the most sense to me. But, you know, what do I know? When is I the know, real Mardi Gras? Right? <laughs> Let's say Le Bon Temps Roule. The 5th. Of March. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to do my counting. <laughs> There's a lot of hands in this. <laughs> well, thank you, Julie. <laughs> Brian? Who? Brian? 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 Brian in the back here. We'll give you the... Um, I lost it. Uh, okay, so... Um, I it. Florida residents can now... Um, can now purchase a three-day discovery ticket for only $175 plus tax for a limited time. That's uh, $59 per day plus tax. Valid for admission to one theme park per day. Residents can also add a fourth day for just $20 more plus tax. So that's four days for $49 per day plus tax or $195 total plus tax. Um, Disney World tickets can be purchased now through June 27th, 2019, and Florida residents can visit any day through June 30th, 2019. Wow. Um, Do you think Disney no block has, out dates. You think Disney has officially overpriced their tickets for Florida residents? It, it, this is now the third special ticket they've released for Florida residents. You mean yeah. annual passes are overpriced no, versus I think, this? I think day tickets. I think your, your average Floridian can't, won't have an annual pass. And they just can't go one day. Yeah. No, it's. I used to have a friend who lived up in Jacksonville, and she loved getting yeah. ticket deals like this because it allowed them to come down for just a little bit and I'll get the quick experience. And that was their one time for the year. I mean, it's, I'll do this for Grace. Her annual pass comes due around her birthday, and she expects it as a birthday gift every year. And it's gotten so high yeah. that I said, well, this is kind of a pricey birthday gift. So, no, I'm not going to do it this year. So maybe... <laughs> or it could be her birthday every month when you pay that monthly. Right? <laughs> Happy birthday! There's the forty dollars. <laughs> no, ain't gonna happen. 
That's it. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, now we, uh, we're we coming down to the last nine minutes of the show here. Julie's got to get out right at two to pick up the kids. So we are going to do our rapid fire question and answering. So right now is the time to start asking any questions you might want us to answer. I don't oh, think we're going to answer. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, each other. Oh. Yeah, not them. Oh, oh, I'm oh, joking. No, I'm joking. Wait, it's oh, them. Okay. He's going to ask John some questions. Quick, John. Go ahead, ask me something while we get him in the okay. thing. See. Not about Taco Bell. Not about Taco yeah. Bell. So, oh, what's for lunch today? Teresa, oh. how much time do you take for lunch at the Welcome Center? <laughs> you got to go to Taco Bell and you got to go to Ron John's. How much time do you take? Oh, we take 30 minute lunches. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Three times a day. thing I've heard all day. <laughs> no. Okay, here we go. Maybe uh, Julie and or Teresa can answer this. What are the best non park activities for a toddler besides the pool? I like to race toddlers. <laughs> I like to put up a little line down and see how. Oh, Disney how, loves doing that now. That's not what. That's not what they mean. They do race toddlers. <laughs> they do. They race them. They race yes. them all summer and tomorrow. It's the land. little Jack Jack Dash, and yeah. it's so hot. And those poor Aww. little babies. Are they running? <laughs> no, they crawl. On the their hot. knees are on the on the hot. Ground. No, Stella they, was in a crawling contest a whole once, thing. and she fell asleep before it started. Um, she was twenty-one. The little riding crops are for okay, sale so in Tomorrowland. Can I give a pe- nap? Nap, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I used to love to do that. Come back, we all get in the bed and we nap while everybody else goes to do whatever they want. For everybody yeah. knows toddler needs a nap. They need a break. Yeah, yeah. Okay. just downtime. I see a lot of toddlers in the splash pads at like Disney Springs yeah. mm-hmm. and things like that. Toddler That's what we used to do. Splash pads. And there is a fifty dollar beach towel for sale right next door. Right at, at Ron John. Very true. <laughs> Okay. Next question. It's been a hard, it's been a long time since yeah. I've had a toddler. It has. Yeah, well, I apologize to throw you out there like that. Uh, what's your favorite ride at Epcot that's not Soren? Mm. Mm, I question. like the France movie. Me too. <laughs> that was going to be mine. It's not a ride, it's a movie. Yeah. Spaceship Actually, Earth. Spaceship Earth is still mine, yeah. yeah Spaceship Rhino? Earth. I like the Margarita line. Okay. So I believe three to two to one. <laughs> With Impressions de France. So. I, okay, I have a confession. I just did Impressions de France for the first time this weekend. First time? Yeah, well, I might have done it when I was like a kid or something like that, because it looks like the film might have be You've never been in Epcot? It is been old, hot? but you do not down the film. No, no. I actually, I was actually like watching so it the whole time and thinking fun. it's one it. of the better of the multi-camera filmed I like projections Canada, I've too, seen, though. where yeah. like it lines He's up funny. where like, Martin Guys, Short. come on. I'm, I'm doing the sound here, and everybody is talking over each other. How are we all going to hear each other? I Ooh. wasn't listening, so that <laughs> really? answers that. So did you like it? Yes. I'm not talking anymore. Just ask the next question. Did you question. like it? Just give me a yes or no. I think this was a nook hissy fit, I think. Give all me right, a yes Finley or Jr. no. I need to know right now. Did tell, you like Impressions de France? Tell us your Impressions de France. Rhino, right <laughs> tell us. What's it about? It was fine. No, it's okay. It's good. Not, I didn't say, was it fine? I said, did you like it? Yes or no? We. Oui. Okay. It was fine. It's go. not fine. Yeah. Wait. Next question. Okay, the next question. I just had it right here and I lost it. Uh, Noelia wants to know, should I get a fast pass to go on Alien Swirl Saucers in December 2019? I don't know. Sure. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's available and it doesn't conflict with your other stuff, yeah, I'd definitely do it. <laughs> what? Sure. Yes, Alex. Uh, Jen, the uh, Taco Bell hater, wants to know what <laughs> restaurant to go to at Disney Springs on the very first night. That is, Taco that is Bell. Is Mongo's. If you're going to be here before May 31st, Maria and Enzo's, they were an immigrant couple who decided to build a restaurant <laughs> in an airline terminal. Nice callback. <laughs> Disney Springs? Morimoto. Morimoto, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or uh, Homecoming. Both are, those are my favorites. Yeah. I had lunch at Wine Bar George. It was good. Was it good? Yeah. I, I do like the idea. Polite Pig, though, too. It's, and I like um, I like going to the Four Rivers, mm-hmm. the food truck that they have set up there. They have a food their, truck? Yeah, yeah, but it's not their barbecue. It is actually, it is kind of like Mexican street food style. So. But it's Four Rivers, like by my house, Four Rivers? Yeah, but again, it's not the same kind of... It's the same company, right. just not the same style. So, like, they oh. have brisket, but it's not their sliced brisket. You can get it in a cone. Brisket. Yeah. Yeah, their taco cone. Mm-hmm. A taco yeah. cone. Taco it's, cone. Yeah, it's, again, okay. like street food inspired with barbecue. Got it. But they are not taco prices. I guess it depends yeah. if Jen wants to go and sit down and have mm-hmm. a sit-down meal or just grab something quick. 
Yeah. That would be dependent on. Next question. Morimoto. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we will answer two more questions. I'm going to save that uh, one for. <laughs> Say it. I like this one. Uh, Kathy wants to know: Will the nuclear plant sell guns in the gift shop? That's that's a good callback to two of our news stories. Uh, a lot of Taco Bell questions in here. I'll be honest. Let's wow. answer one. <laughs> well, we're going to save that one for for very last. The unplug um, is brought to you by Taco Bell. <laughs> <I> wish <laughs> really every day. Really. <laughs> Send us free stuff. Yeah, I will be your chalupa say it. representative. Just say it. Yo quiero that? Taco Bell. I'm saving, that. I'm saving that for the very end. I love. I'm. I'm sorry, but I did have one the other day, and I told her I was like, I had to make a run for the border. You guys remember when that was their slogan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't I think don't it's my very first, often, but I I, yeah, I don't think it's my first choice. No. but we definitely had Taco it's Bell. It's quick. It's inexpensive. You used to get like ten dollars worth of food, and you get like yeah. a bucket. Mm-hmm. Of taco. I, I, I actually read a thing that it is one of the healthier of the fast food chains that is out there now. It, it like slowly crept up with how like it used to be like we're like ah oh, that meat's not real, well, and now have to, they have their like, fresh menu. You have to eat from that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Karen asks if you could only eat at one sit down restaurant, what would it be and why? Ooh. In all of Disney World. Yes. Or in the whole world. Mm. <laughs> We're going to go with Walt Disney World. In the whole world. Chico. Mm, that's really? A that's a good one. And my reason is that those are flavors that I don't find in the rest of my life. Mm. I can go to California Grill, which it's is John's good. Fault. I can go to the Brown Derby, which is good. However, those flavors at Chico are different than anything else that's part of my the diet. The problem I have with Chico is they're, they're constantly tweaking that menu, and it's getting away from... No, no, see, I like being tweaked. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with more, I'm gonna stick with Morimoto. Take the off of it. Yeah. Come over here, I'll trick you. <laughs> I like Morimoto. There's yeah. nothing I don't like about. I've always had a good meal in there. I like. I just love it. That's a good call, without a doubt. I love Tebanito in Japan yeah. and Epcot for people who don't know. Not the hibachi, no thanks. Well, that's Tokyo. Dining I like. I know Tokyo. exactly. So, because okay. we like to sit in the window and people watch, and I don't know. I've had lots of good experiences there. You gonna let Rhino talk? No, I'm good. Oh, um, he's hurt. I, I think he's all butt hurt. What are we gonna do? I completely it? agree. Morimoto is definitely one of my favorite restaurants on Disney property. The other one being Hoop Dee Doo Review because, and I I like mm. Kevin's um, reasoning for his because it's flavors that you wouldn't normally have. That's why I lean toward Morimoto. But I I love Hoop Dee Doo. I love that feeling you leave with. I love being there. I know it's basic, and I know I just hepatitis. picked the two restaurants <laughs> that had a hepatitis outbreak too. <laughs> So don't take my res- uh, my recommendations until you know they've been cleaned. I like that queasy feeling I leave with. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm at Wine Bar George right now. That's it's a, it's a good. It really left a big impression on me. So do try I, you know what I love about Wine Bar George is when if you sit um if you get sat upside uh, that's upside, where I sat upstairs I sat top. on yeah. the on the um upside. the balcony outside it I I had some wine there when I came back um in January and I was just like. Look at this view. Like you can kind of mm-hmm. see how where Disney Springs has all come from, and you have a nice glass of wine and share just like li- you know a little uh, charcuterie board or something like that. It's nice. Just, it instantly makes me feel way classier than I actually am. Yes, that's and what I said too. It's all, any place that can do that is a good I think wine. Taco Bell would do that for you. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Oh, well, speaking of Taco Bell, uh, we're going to finish with Ghost Ride the Dole Whip. Which park would be best for a Taco Bell? Oh, oh, good question. Which what? Which park, park would be best? So, yeah. Cot. Because of the international nature of Taco exactly. Bell? <laughs> I know your mind is I was going to say Hollywood Studios. I, I think. think I would say Hollywood Studios, See, too. I was going to say Magic Kingdom. I was, uh, too. Just because I like how, you know, kind of goes with the... The fake Mexican yeah. side of Disney, because of course we all know that Doritos were invented in Disneyland. So why not put Hold the first in park? We all know Taco that. Bell at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, we Is all didn't know that. True. <laughs> yeah. Dor- we're, prove it. Explain Doritos it. Doritos were. I am so googling yeah. that. I'm Doritos so like the Doritos you. that I eat. Yeah. Yeah. The no, very the ones you wear. From that day. <laughs> I like how he just casually was like, as we all know, uh-huh. Doritos were invented. To Disney. And he knew that none of us knew that. That's why he was being so. He made it up. Oh, see, there's actually some of us who don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, this is basic trivia here. It's also coming about. full circle. Because really? Doritos is it from the Locos. 80s Trivia Pursuit game? Yeah. <laughs> In, you know, that's right. knows right. Doritos, Locos, Tacos. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> In the early days of Disneyland, 
a restaurant named Casa de Fritos <laughs> invented Doritos by repurposing stale tortillas and brought them from a local vendor. Of course, vendor. That this is Disney. according to Craig's Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> They were wait, called little wait, golden wait a, things. Wait a minute, though. <laughs> little golden that restaurant things. was called some Fritos. So was it? Casa de Fritos. Was it a Fritos sponsored restaurant, or was Fritos invented That's there? That's going to require more googling. Yes, yeah, more googling. This is a rabbit hole. We're never getting Mary out jo of. Mary Joe would like to point out that it is common knowledge for Disneyland people. Okay. So. Well, just go ahead and eject well, her from the chat. Not from California. <laughs> well, Mary Joe, I love you to death, but. I don't know. Ooh. They used to sell bras on Main Street, too. They did, yeah. A lot of stuff. So if you would like to know That's more history <laughs> on Walt Disney Parks, you can always listen in to Connecting with Walt every Friday. Oh, Boom. Oh. Oh. Was there a Doritos episode? I, yeah, we, we actually spent two hours going into the details on Doritos. Maybe we should watch a good that time. sometime. I don't know. We should. Uh, <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> really. Who has time for that? You know, who has time for any of this? So we should wrap things up. Uh, thank you to everyone here for participating and joining along. This has been uh, one of the weirder ones we've done. Uh, probably won't be the last, but yeah. So uh, thank you to everyone out there for listening and watching to this. We will see you again next week. So cue my music up, and I won't see you because I'll be on vacation. So bye. Bye.